Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage View Lab, and today we're taking a partial look at our PowerEdge R750. Now Dell, in their cheeky sort of way, launched 17 new systems on March 17th. I guess it had to be done. And at the time, what they were doing is trying to bridge the gap between the AMD Milan uh, launch, which was taking place, and then of course the Intel Ice Lake or third gen Xeon launched, which didn't happen until April 6th. Uh, but they sort of pre-announced all of their Intel-based systems, which uh, was a little strange from a typical market launch sort of thing. They're the only ones to have really done it. Um, either the other brands were uh, too afraid of Intel to pre-release or just didn't care for that uh, strategy. Be that as it may, we do have an R750. We did a deep dive on the system uh, and got as close as we legally could to the edge in terms of what we could share about the capabilities of the system. We're still a little bit away from being able to show performance results. That won't happen until May when the uh, server hits GA. Until then, though, we can now, with Intel's uh, launch, show you some of the things that we think are really neat about the system. Uh, Kevin, I mean, we've had these power edges in the, system, in the lab for 740s, 730s. Did we have them before then? And we had 720s. As part of the lab infrastructure? Um. Or the no, those the, review systems. Those are more review systems that stayed around for a really long time. Anyway, so we've had PowerEdge for a long time. I know you love the build, you love the manageability, all sorts of other things about it. The 750 is just a progression in the line. Yeah, so the 750 very much looks like the R740 before it. I could have mentioned that. We've got the R740 XD underneath. Yeah, and uh, from the 730 and 710, those had more uh, visual differences. This one kind of evolves on all of the cool features that R740 had. I mean, R740 brought in the uh, uh, the wireless synchronization features to mm -hmm. allow you to deploy it using a mobile phone, for example. Right. Uh, kind of got rid of the initial crash cart that everyone's seen around a data center. Oh, yeah, that Open Manage mobile app, we did a deep dive on that. It's pretty slick. Yeah. And um, on the um, uh, modularity of the systems, uh, a lot of the components you'd see cross-compatibility between... Uh, different models in the lineup, um, and even on the back, it's you've, there are certain similarities, but they've uh, adopted like the OCP slots and okay. gone into a more open standard. Don't for, get ahead of the the big reveal of well, all the new stuff. You wanted me to list everything cool. And it's everything. <laughs> I, know, I didn't say list it all, but dang. Anyway, uh, what you can see though is visually, or what you can't see is that visually they look very very similar. A lot of what Dell's done is is under the cover. Some of the stuff that Kevin mentioned, things like PCIe Gen 4 support in the front bays, you can't you know see it, but it's there. Well, they're there. I mean, they're right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the uh, at the deck here, and I put together two slides. Promise this will be short. I uh, really wanted to pull out some of the big changes in the R750, and this uh, list really holds truth for the R650 as well. Of course, that's the one new server, more compute intensive, fewer drive base, but a lot of the new stuff is still there. Um, so as we noted, we've got 24 NVMe base support, all Gen 4 across the front. And there is a nuance with those. Uh, if you, I believe it's at uh, 16, they're direct connected onto the motherboard at 16 plus, you know, uh, dealing with a uh, switch. So there's a variance there between what is uh, direct attached versus uh, not. Okay, right. So in the 24 bay config, there's a little bit of a difference. Uh, four drive bays optional in the back. If you go all NVMe across the front, those are going to be uh, SATA SAS drives in the back. If you don't use up all 24 bays, I believe those can also be NVMe in the back. The boss, I know we're going to talk about that more, so I'll skip that for now. But it's a new boss setup. It's uh, externally accessible. It is really, really sweet. And then hardware RAID, NVMe RAID, is actually a pretty big deal uh, with the latest PERC controller. Uh, that's not something we commonly see or had seen to this point in most servers. Yeah, we're curious how the performance that's going to be handled since traditionally you've seen RAID cards with like a, a PCI Gen 3 x 8 uh, slot, which is going to be limited to around 60 gigabytes a second. Right. Even on the older um, uh, PCI Gen 3 um uh, or NVMe Gen 3 uh, SSDs, you could max that out with two SSDs. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that, that's been the biggest problem with NVMe hardware, uh, RAID hardware, is that it's just too slow and the drives are too fast. And, and so most have resorted to software RAID, software 
applications to manage the storage. Well, yeah, and it does pretty well. And a lot of the platforms that we see these days that are software defined, they don't want you to use a rate card. They want it to be HBA pass through for all the devices. So I'm right. curious how the uh, the hardware rate cards, uh, which applications will depend on it, or even uh, care that it's uh, implemented. Right. So there is that, of course. Um, the other hardware bonuses you get your uplift on the DRAM on speed. The 32 DIMM support's pretty massive. That's a pretty big jump over the R740. Uh, well, yeah, and a lot of that comes from the uh, the larger DRAM footprints that you can get on the uh, uh, Gen 3 CPUs and also uh, PMEM slots. So if you wanted to have a lot of DIMMs for uh, DRAM, you still have slots left over for uh, PMEM. And that's the big change of going from, what, uh, 6 to 8? Uh, yeah, 6 channels to 8 channels channel support, on the right. uh, per CPU. And on the previous ones, I think DRAM ended up slowing down or the channels weren't as optimized if you used uh, beyond the uh, uh, initial 12 slots per CPU. So there's, uh, it's gotten better this time around. All right. A uh, bunch of I.O. slots on the back, OCP3, as you noted. A uh, lot of configurability uh, on the Gen 4 slots in the back. And they also have a variant of the R750 that's more GPU-centric uh, that makes a uh, similar uh, use of the server, just different layout in the back for the uh, GPUs. The multi-vector cooling is really neat. The new fans is really neat. Liquid cooling that they've got going on is pretty neat too. A lot of people think uh, we're nearing the end of, uh, of air-cooled servers in large data centers just because the, the performance and the thermals of these higher higher and higher end CPUs as they go. And then of course, some of the manageability we talked about and improved security. Um, go ahead and hit one more slide here because this is not the R750 actually, but it's a great visual to highlight what they've done architecturally to manage the, the thermals. I believe this is actually uh, one of the AMD based servers, but on the left you can see where they used to clump the power supplies in the back right. It was a choke point for Yeah, air. basically a wall, right? And yeah. so the, you've got some heat buildup areas. And now the power supplies are split, as you see on the right, and the air just goes much more evenly across the platform. And while it seems like a minor thing, again, with the high performance, um, everything in these systems, the Gen 4 SSDs, the new Xeon Scalable, the DRAM, the PMEM that you can put in there, and all the, uh, the, the high action cards in the middle, I mean, there's good reason to be concerned about the thermals. Yeah. So you showed a little bit of the front. You want to spin these around if we can carefully and see what visually stands out at the back. Yeah, and the, the R750 is about an inch longer, so we'll it is, line these. It is a wee longer. So we'll you can, line those dudes up. So you can see the power supplies, of course, on the 740 down in the corners. And here they've uh, split out to the sides, uh, which we highlighted in that slide. OCP slot. What else stands the out? The handle's nicer and bigger, which has no no main bearing on the uh, server, but is kind of interesting. All right, pop one of those boss cards. So that's one of the neatest things in my view. If Dell could have done all sorts of neat wizardry on cooling. This is still my favorite thing. Yeah. So if you've used uh, or interacted with the original boss card, it was pretty nice. It gave you a way to have uh, RAID protected uh, boot storage, uh, RAID one, uh, for example, oh, and only RAID one on the protected side or right. stripe. Um, and uh, it was a PCIe add-on card. So you took up a slot inside the server, and then to get access to it, you had to take this, uh, the main uh, cover off the server and access it that way. This time now, you get direct access uh, through the uh, rear of the server. Yeah, and they're just little SATA drives for, for boot, but to have access in the back and to not give up any of your 2.5-inch bays for boot, it's just a... The boss card's always been a nice solution. This is now a nice, elegant solution, I think. Yeah. Uh, so as Kevin says, you can raid those together and do uh, do quite a bit there. And of course, you can see the uh, port support. There is a second onboard gigabit uh, LAN port, uh, which is new in this build, but no 10 gig. Yeah, well, they're expecting that you're going to leverage the um, uh, the OCP slot. So on the um, original R740, one of the uh, nuances there is if you went to a uh, two-port uh, 25 gig uh, uh, platform, this guy is, uh, well, I think it might have changed a little bit through the uh, duration, but uh, 
the early uh, platforms, uh, we had a, a particular build with uh, two uh, dual port Mellanox card. If you went with that, you only had two ports of 25 gig and mm-hmm. nothing additional for uh, management outside of the iDRAC uh, connector. And there are certain networking implementations where it makes it really tough without a third port there. Uh, now, no matter what, you always have one gig access into the server for your OS, and you could still add on uh, additional networking for uh, more high-speed uh, fabric connections. Yeah, and I think that's one of the neat things about that OCP OCP port is that it frees up your your big bays for other things. Well, yeah, and it makes it a more common standard. The uh, the previous dire board is a specific uh, solution for I think it was an R uh, NDC or mm-hmm. NRDC uh, yeah, right. slot. Um, it was Dell specific and wasn't leveraged across the ecosystem. The OCP slot is an open standard, and you're going to find much uh, wider range of oh, yeah. uh, card mean, options. We already see 100 gig cards from Mellanox, Broadcom. I mean, pretty much everybody's developing cards for that slot. Let's uh, pop this guy up and show the insides. Now, it's funny, actually, before we do that, uh, before we flip it over, you love so taking up fans. I, no, I know, I know. I always take out the fans, and I love the fans. But the fans are brand new in uh, in this design, and they are um, what were they? Three blade or two blade before? They're three uh, blade. Th- three now. to five. Whatever. They added a lot of blades. They made the fans better. They, and Dell uh, is really big on cooling. Uh, we've been, or I'm not sure if Brian's been on there, but I've been down to their uh, acoustic testing uh, lab. And uh, where other vendors look at uh, cooling from a how much airflow can we push to the server, Dell looks at it as a what's the least amount of airflow and least amount of noise to get the job done. And you end up having a server that same performance level is a lot quieter or use, uh, consumes much less air. So if you have a dedicated hot and cool, uh, cool aisle, mm-hmm. you're going to draw uh, less air out of your cool aisle, put less air into the hot aisle, and it's going to be more efficient, not just on the power demands of the server itself, but the whole uh, HVC system. Uh, setup that you yes. have in your uh, data center. I'm very much down with less heat and more blades and better fans. So these are pretty slick. It's a minor thing, I know, but um, actually these might be my two favorite things: the boss and the fans. Yes. But let's uh, let's turn them over. We can show some of what's going on inside. So we've got, of course, the drives here. Fans take over. So, yeah, fans, drives, you have your uh, backplane for uh, the PCIe side, and uh, I think, yeah, there we go. So, we get a little bit more visibility there. And uh, this backplane is going to be modular depending on what um, uh, options you go for. And then you have your uh, DRAM layout. Right now, we only have uh, DRAM, we don't have any PMEM installed. And before yesterday, all we could say is probably Intel CPUs, but these are the third gen Xeons, you know, so that's not much of a secret. What are these, 8380s in there? No, it was a, uh, I think part of the gold line. Oh, we we the, do have those. Though. We got the mediums. We do have some 8380s. We'll, we'll check that out too. But it, it's a nice elegant layout. You saw a lot of this on the R740 or even the R730 where there's not all of exposed wiring, everything is kept off to the sides. And it's easy to service, but also it's very clean for airflow going through. And these risers, if you yank either one of these, I don't know if you want to, but uh, you'd see the power supply is underneath. And then in the middle, you've uh, managed to squeeze in the honey badger already. Yes, we finally have a server that has a full height and full length uh, slot, which not all servers do. Some not are... all servers do. Almost no servers do. It's been an absolute nightmare to find a server that will fit this card. A lot of times, depending on the placement, it'll be like on top of the heat sinks or it'll be bashing into something else. So uh, there's enough, maybe that extra inch made all the difference. Well, the, a lot of the servers that would support it would be a GPU-centric server since you need that full height, full length slot. The R7 or R750, for example, with that little extra space ends up being where you probably don't need a longer variant to support GPUs. It's just switching around how the... Uh, right. Uh, card slots are done and there are different options depending on if you want uh, additional by eight uh, slots or by 16 slots there's so there's definitely some customization that can be taken place depending on how you how you want your uh, system configured right but overall you get up to eight slots in addition to I think the OCP slots you get a ton of expandability if you want yeah and it's um, I wonder is there a way we can show here let's move this guy to the front of the R740 okay now take off the cover for a second of this guy. I want to show oh, this off. is going to get dangerous. Here, I got this server. You have it all the way? Yes. All right. Okay. So 
the main difference here, you could say, well, the R750 has roughly the same number of uh, PCI expansion slots as the R740, but this guy is also uh, supporting eight NVMe devices. This one, I believe, is uh, eight or might be 12. But the key difference here is we're not using add-on cards for uh, the direct connections for the NVMe base. Right. So these two cards in the R740 are the uh, NVMe controllers that uh, just use up a lot of extra space. And I must say, before you carry on, look at the size of this puny fan next to this chungus fan, and you will see clearly the new fan is much better, at least a th third wider, which is fantastic yeah and again the uh, on this guy the raid card also took up a slot yep so on this server we have uh, one two three four I'm not sure if there's a fifth under there but you're using um, four of your available uh, PCI slots where this server has the exact same uh, component tree configuration and almost all the slots are open except the one where we have our gigantic honey badger card installed right and just to mention again the R650 um, right would be Almost identical layout to this, just squished down a little bit and fewer drives, but it still has pretty good I.O. support. So Dell's got another really good option in their mainstream server portfolio that's Intel-based if you want the more dense compute experience uh, in your rack rather than the, uh, the 2U R750 that you know, takes more height but also gives you more modularity. Yeah, and one thing that'll be pretty fun on this, uh, when we were looking at some of the uh, early AMD-based platforms that had a lot of NVMe on the front, it almost took up every single available PCI slot, and some got deactivated throughout the way, right. even if it feels physically still open. This guy, you're able to, I mean, if you're looking at, um, well, right these days, eight or more uh, NVMe SSDs, you're talking like 20, 30, or 40 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, you're gonna need open base of 100 gig or other uh, high-speed networking to move right. that out of the system. You're, you start getting a lot of fun options now. Yeah, absolutely. So this will be a great platform for a lot of software-defined options. I'm sure those guys are, are chomping at the bit to, to run, uh, gosh, I don't know, you could run Store One on there, Lightbits, vSAN, yeah. I mean, there's a ton of different options there. Um, as well as just using as your mainstream application server. But users that go from, from gosh, the 740, but what if you're back at like a 730? How big of a difference is this? It's night and day at this point. Yeah, huge. The 730, um, uh, it, it just won't be a fair comparison. So, all right. So I said the boss cards and the fans are my favorite. I don't know if you declared a favorite part of the 750. Well, since it can fit the honey badger, that's what it <laughs> so have so you like the I/O access is your favorite thing? Yeah, Gen Four native uh, slots in the front. You have I/O access. I mean, all of our servers these days we're putting in uh, fiber channel or high speed networking on it just to complete the reviews. This guy we can put anything we want in and it'll fit. Can and will. So keep an eye out for our upcoming review. We're waiting on a final firmware build. It'll probably be sometime in in mid May. Uh, but for now, those are our favorite things about the R750. Hit us up in the comments and let us know what you like about it, what you're excited about, and we'll make sure to pursue that uh, in our review and further content. Thanks for tuning in.